Guys, what's up? It is Doug from Trigger King here, and the last video I recorded here of me talking was me unboxing the Tamiya Globe Liner and the MFC and all the goodies with it. And well, uh, as you can see at the beginning of this video, the truck is rolling. It is done, at least the tractor part of it. I don't have the trailer yet, but I wanted to talk about building the Globe Liner and just a few things here over you as I finally built one of them. Here's the truck, folks. It is a big truck. These 114 scale semi trucks. Uh, you know, despite being 114 scale, they're that scale because if you had a 110 scale semi truck, it would be gigantic. They're pretty big. The Globe Liner has the shortest wheelbase here. Uh, you can see, I'll put it on the bench and, and do some video here in a minute like that, but it is a big truck. Now, the radio I'm using on this truck, it's a brand new Spectrum D6E system. First time I've ever had a stick remote outside of the, the toy grade stuff. I mean, I've used them before you know, in that capacity. I've never had a hobby grade style of this. So uh, it's been a little bit of a learning curve, but driving the truck's fairly easy and uh, programming the MFC wasn't too bad. Thanks to Hobby Concepts uh, has an excellent video detailing how to program and set the function of the MFC unit. You, I'll link that below here if you're interested. Uh, chances are, if you're interested in this kind of stuff that you probably have seen that video, but he's got a direct video that shows how to program and it's awesome. Here's a better look at the truck, guys. Pardon the fluorescent lighting here. I have my shop lighting on it, but there's what you can see here. Uh, the, the truck looks very nice. I have the back panel off of it right now. Very pretty truck. Now, the goal of this build was to build an off-road semi-truck uh, like the SnowRunner video games to do some logging, right? And I'm going to get a, a, to me, a logging trailer for it. It's actually the pole trailer, as it's called. But um, that's going to be coming soon, and I'll talk about it. But as far as the tractor part goes here, uh, it has been fun to drive. But those snags, I, I wanted to talk about a couple things. Uh, if you're looking to do an off-road style semi out of one of these things, there's a couple things that I had to learn or I, I you know, been learning um, as it goes. And one would be the drive shaft. All right, now here's the issue I found with an off-road truck. So I am not running shocks on this truck, okay? And the reason for that, everybody suggested you get more articulation when you don't. And that is true because the way the suspension pivots, it freely pivots. The problem with that though is uh, he might notice there's no drive shaft here. Well, this propeller shaft just keeps falling out. I've tried moving the cups up and down. I've tried using um, like a little uh, a rubber spacer in there to keep it from falling out. Well, the problem is when you just articulate it uh, all the way at one spot here, mainly when the, the rear axle goes all the way back like that, this will fall out. I'm gonna wind up just get some uh, CVD style drive shafts uh, with sliders. Um, they actually create, uh, they actually make those, and there's a bunch of them I see on like Amazon and eBay and other things. So I'll wind up picking up some drive shafts. I'll talk about that. Um, until then, I couldn't really do much off road driving because they wanna pop out, and I didn't use the shocks. So those shocks will actually help keep that in place. Uh, it it kind of makes the suspension sturdier like that, where probably it can't pop out as easy, but. Given how I want this truck to articulate because I'm going to be doing some off-roading with it, um, I have to have the articulation. Good news, the suspension does seem to articulate, and these tires on the limited trail running I've done because of the drive shaft issue, these tires grip great. So um, I'll fix that drive shaft issue. Uh, that'll be in the next video, uh, probably when I'm talking about the trailer and everything, and uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But that is the issue, is right here, the, the drive shaft uh, wants to pop out if you have articulation and you don't run shocks. Now these tires are something I added. Uh, these were not in the unboxing. I actually picked up these Lisu. I actually don't know how you pronounce this, so pardon me. I've seen it seen. Uh, I've seen it pronounced L-E-S-U, and also heard it Lisu. Uh, but anyways, these tires here, which I bought from Semi Joe. Uh, Semi Joe's awesome. You should follow him on Facebook. Uh, dude just knows everything about the truck. Sells a bunch of stuff. I picked these up from him, and uh, the front tires are like that too. Um, so I wound up getting uh, ten of them. And these tires are off-road style semi-truck tires, and they work really, really well out on the trails to testing. I can already see they work great. So this is what I did to the diffs. This was uh, Scotty555 Babe on YouTube. I saw the idea here actually, and you take, normally on the diff, there's, um, you know, these three diff gears right here. You take this one off, you take one of your spider gears off, and you put it here, 
in the middle, sorry here. It's tough to do this with uh, holding this with one hand. Um, you put it in there, I'll snug it up eventually, but when you snug it up, actually, it does lock the diff, according to him, and in, in reading some of the other things out there, it's not in there all the way. But when you get it in there all the way, it does apparently lock the diff, so I'm gonna try it that way. Little tip here, guys, I found this is awesome, this Tamiya Extra Thin uh, Cement. For a build like this, or scale modeling, but uh, you know the, the build like this is what we're talking about, this is amazing. It has a little dropper in here to where it's very, very fine, goes on fine. You can just quickly drop it in and boom, it sticks quick. And once it cures, it cures very well. And it doesn't leave a bunch of nasty residue or anything. Um, you know, this is a, a lot of hobby shops have this, but it was it's absolutely worth its weight in gold on a semi truck like this. Now the MFC unit, man, uh, it looks very intimidating when you open the box, all those wires everywhere. Once you get your head around it, it's not that bad. The instructions are pretty good. There's some great videos out there. Again, Hobby Concepts uh, has uh, some good ones. I keep plugging him. He's been very helpful, his, his channel on it. But there's some other great channels devoted to these trucks, too. You can find some videos on it. But the MFC, uh, once you wrap your head around it, it's all labeled pretty well, and it's all fairly simple. I actually, on the Globe Liner, mounted my MFC, the actual unit part, to the roof of it. And then uh, you can kind of see the rest of the layout here. I did use Loctite everywhere on this because I've heard the truck will shake itself apart with that shaker if you don't. Kind of the issue with the MFC is doing work on the truck or under the, you know, with the body off, that's a little tricky because the wires are just everywhere on it. So be aware of the MFC if you're intimidated for doing it. Uh, you know, the instructions are well written. There are great uh, resources online. Of course, you could leave a comment here and I'll help you if I can with it. But um, the MFC, it's very, very cool though in actual operation of the truck. Guys, you can see the cab here, uh, inside the cab, how it's set up. I've got my battery right here, and I actually mounted the control unit uh, on top of it here. It's got some uh, shock absorbing tape, and boy, that stuff is sticky, so it looks like that might come off. It will not come off. It was very tricky. Um, hard to kind of see in the cab here, uh, the shakers over there, the shaker unit. Um, you can see from that picture, though, uh, that I had in before how everything was kind of laid out. Now, I'm not gonna put this on, but how it works is everything is in here. And then this uh, actually slides in like that from the top. And once it slides in, you use these sliders right here and that locks your back plate on. And that's kind of the, you know, the, I guess not a body mount, but that, that closes your access. Uh, so you don't just have an open back cab. The cab actually attaches with these screws right here. So that's how that works. And uh, last thing on these tires, by the way, I forgot. I actually use a paint pen to uh, letter those. I thought it looked better. Now note here on the fifth wheel, I actually didn't do anything with this because I believe this is going to go away whenever I get the Tamiya pole trailer. It has a logging back end on it. Again, that's, you know, the, the logging that I intend to do on it. So I didn't mess with really the fifth wheel. Um, I could hook up, there's a little sensor you can hook up with the, um, the MFC. So you actually, when it couples, it actually makes a sound, but I didn't even mess with that because I didn't think I needed to do it. Now, this truck was a ton of fun to build. I learned a lot doing it. Um, you know, I'm a pretty experienced hobbyist, and there was a lot of things I learned doing this. It's a little bit different on this style of truck than semi other stuff I've done in the past. Uh, one was, uh, you know, I haven't built a Tamiya kit um, in a while, or even I used to build Tamiya model tanks, uh, not not the RC ones, but the actual model ones. And it's been a while since I've done any actual like real modeling. This truck is a combination of, of RC building and modeling. Now, yes, it's mainly RC stuff, but Doing all little details on the cab, a lot of that, uh, you use actually some glue on that. So just beware if you're gonna be doing this, you don't want to build one of these trucks. Uh, it is kind of a hybrid RC scale modeling thing, but it turned out amazing. I'm very happy with this. I actually painted this truck, uh, tried to do it 
in a, a blue like my Toyota uh, TRD Sport Tacoma, which is actually Voodoo Blue. I, I did that by using a Tamiya White and then um, I put the uh, Brilliant Blue on top of it, got pretty close. I also used some of the decals here, uh, you know, even though that the striping on it, I, I didn't know how it would look, but it, in mocking it up, it looked pretty cool. So I wound up striping it like that. I'm really happy with how that looked. I also painted the tanks on it blue. All right, guys, so that's the Globe Liner. Very fun build on this. I'm very happy I have one of these. I'm excited to get the pole trailer. Um, add that drive shaft uh, to the back here, fix that little drive shaft issue, and then uh, get it out on the trails and do some logging. So I'm very excited to shoot some scale videos like that. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, leave it below. Uh, there'll be more trucking on this channel here soon, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you guys for watching.